Welcome to the lesson on species interactions. Okay, so what we have here, um, we're studying ecosystems, and ecosystems involves the interplay between different, you know, organisms and how they fit together and how they interact with each other. Uh, you know, it's, it's a complete system. You have the biotic and abiotic aspects, right? So abiotic would be, you know, when you're breathing the air or an organism breathes the air or, uh, you know, digs in the sand, like say a clam digs down into the sand. It's interacting with the water and with the uh, sand. And those are abiotic. They're not living. But what this lesson gets into is interactions between living things, different types of ways that they interact, different kinds of species, right? So this is, you have the cells, tissues, organs, organ system, organism, levels of organization, the individual living organism, a one person or one deer or one ant or blade of grass, that would be the individual organism. Now you get the groups of organisms of the same type. Those are called the population, right? And that would be a, of a given species, like the human species or the species of sparrows, the population of crows that live in uh, the Northwest or in a particular region, whatever it is of a given species. And then you have the biological community where the different species interact. That's what this lesson is about, is how things interact in the biological community level where the interaction of different types of living things, different species. So it's called species interactions. Okay. So make sure you title your paper with that. There are some notes I'm going to want you to uh, write on this. If it's white, you got to write. Okay. And so we have species interactions. Now this picture here, you can see, you know, three different species of living things here. One there is uh, this gazelle. All right. And so this sort of deer like animal living in the plains and you have the grass there in the grasslands and obviously these the gazelle and the grass interact in a pretty dramatic way the gazelle eats the grass that's what it does for a living that's how it it survives right and the grass is get eaten by the gazelle and it has to be adapted to survive being eaten and trimmed down like that which by the way that happens repeatedly in grasslands and now you know that's why you can mow your lawn and the grass just keeps on growing back it's very uh hardy that way you know you couldn't do that with trees if you chop them down they don't grow back as well grasses uh, can sustain themselves uh, very well uh by being eaten down by grazing animals right and so they're adapted to be eaten by the herbivores and then you have these birds now the birds there's a couple of different ways aspects that the birds might be involved in this uh, one of them is maybe this is a kind of bird that eats the ticks out of the uh, gazelle's ears. In which case it gets food and the gazelle gets its ears cleaned of ticks. That would be a kind of a nice thing. That's called a mutualistic relationship or sometimes referred to as symbiosis. Um, or maybe they're kind of birds that hang around when the, I don't know, the gazelle or the rhinoceros or whatever it is walks through the grassland, bugs fly up in the air and then the birds go get to get the bugs. Well, that would benefit the bird, but it doesn't necessarily benefit the gazelle, right? And that's called the commensalate uh, relationship. And so it benefits one, but it doesn't really hurt the other one, or it doesn't really benefit. So there's different types of relationships you can have, right? One thing eating each other, things helping each other, things hurting each other, whatever. And that's what we're getting into here in this lesson. Okay, so let's ta uh, get a word here. Now, this word has a couple of different meanings uh, and implications. It, the word is symbiosis. Symbiosis. Sim means together. And bio means life. That means living together. Interactions between species. Now, sometimes the word symbiotic means when they live together and it helps both. Okay? There's another name for that, mutualistic, that we're using in our vocabulary. But just be aware symbiosis is when things live together them symbiotically but often it would mean to the benefit of both but not always the word can be used a different a couple of different ways which i know can be confusing but yeah what are you supposed to do that's that's the way it is now one good example of a symbiotic relationship that benefits both is this do you know what this kind of fish is called you know like nemo right what's it called clownfish and clownfishes 
they live in anemones, okay? And now the anemone is almost like an upside down jellyfish. A jellyfish have stinging tendrils that hang down like that. An anemone attaches to the ground and they're adapted to be, or attached to the rocks or the coral or whatever it is at the bottom of the water, the ocean. And it's got the uh, tendrils there and it has stinging cells on the end of each, stinging cells up here. And so they're poisonous. Now the clownfish has a few different things going on to be able to live like that. That's an interesting way. They can live within the anemone and they are protected by those stinging cells. But why doesn't the anemone sting the clownfish? It would if it could, but the clownfish has evolved. It's developed over many, 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 many thousands or millions of years, a kind of a coating that it has. It's like a sort of a mucus coating over its uh, sort of slime coating over its uh, scales that will prevent the uh, stinging cells from stinging it. So it's immune to the sting of the uh, anemone, but the anemone uh, will protect it because it has this place to go and hide. And here's another thing and is that the clownfish sometimes can bring in food for the anemone to eat, right? Just by attracting either another fish that might go after it or particles or morsels left over from the the clownfish is going out and catching some food and coming back and eating it and the particles end up for the anemone. So it helps the two. It's mutually mutually beneficial, right? It's called mutualism. And another thing going on, this bright coloring that has, it's like, oh, I'm orange. You know, most things in nature, you know, they don't want to get eaten, so they camouflage themselves, right? So they try to hide. Ah, oh, I'm going to blend in. You can't see me. The clownfish is kind of a different strategy. Its strategy is to announce itself as being poisonous, right? And so that is a uh, strategy that uh, sometimes is used there. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get into these various types of relationships that living things have. Uh, you know from the reading assignment, you uh, should be already familiar with them. But yeah, go ahead. Just write it over again. It doesn't hurt and it helps you learn it. Uh, the five major types of species interactions are, ladies and gentlemen, predation, herbivory, parasitism, like a parasite. You've heard that word before. Mutualism, where it's mutually beneficial, and commensalism, where it's co means together, means it helps, uh, well, one, it helps one, they just kind of live together. It doesn't really help or hurt the other one. So go ahead and write them down. Uh, maybe it's a little overkill for me to have you write it down again, but do it anyway. I'm giving you a little time here.